like to do a review of the Ural. This is a 2012 Ural Gear Up. This is my Bernese Mountain Dog Ulrich. He kind of is my big pal. Uh, the kind of review I wanted to do is maybe for the new owner, this person that might be considering it, why, how it is, what's the experience like. And I've owned this for a month. I've got a background in sport bikes and cruisers. Uh, and the reason I came to buy a Ural is because uh, I needed more utility. I was taking trips to town, uh, going to work, and always having to carry stuff. And carry stuff that's too big for a motorcycle. You know, video cameras and tripods and all this. I'm sure there's a way to do it. But with the Ural, you've got all the space in the sidecar to accommodate all that. Plus it has a trunk. Uh, so what's it like to ride? Uh, it's not like anything else. It's not a four-wheeler. It's not a motorcycle. Uh, it's kind of a negotiation. You know, my the sport bikes and other motorcycles are very precise. You can hit stuff on the road and and dodge things. Depending on the the road and how the grade is uh, side to side, you have to steer up, you know, towards the middle of the road to keep it straight. If it has low places in it, it might dark to the right, it might dark to the left, so it keeps you on your toes. This is not something I, at this point, I'm relaxed with. So you have to be on your toes. Uh, the Ural is pretty slow, you know, by today's standards. It does keep up with traffic. Uh, you're not, you will not want to go on 70 mile an hour four lanes. That is not what is fun on this. Back roads, uh, off roads, uh, 55 to 60 is very comfortable. More than that, you know, the Ural says that the uh, recommended speed is 62, or the maximum recommended speed is 62, and I probably agree because it's, to me, not a very stable vehicle. It gets, you know, squirrely, and you don't want something darting around at 80 miles an hour. I know there's people that think, let's put a bigger motor on it and make it fast. This is not a fast motorcycle. This is basically 1939 technology, aside from a few other things like disc brakes. Uh, there's a few other things, but it's sort of like buying a modern Model A. Also, when you own one of these things, uh, you're probably not going to be the introvert. You're not going to hide from anyone. Uh, everybody wants to talk to you about it. Go to the store. Uh, we were at a restaurant and the person came in it's like hey do you own that motorcycle and uh, we had a small conversation about it everyone wants to talk to you and if you know one of the first things they ask is what year is it expecting something in the 30s 40s 50s or something and this is a 2012 I'm usually pretty surprised about it unless they're familiar with the brand uh, it's disarming uh, I know there's some motorcycles that may be intimidating for some people to talk about or you know you wouldn't just necessarily walk up to the person and strike up a conversation with maybe a certain type of cruiser guy or, or a sport bike guy who looks really serious this is friendly to kids everyone people are not afraid to talk to you I don't care who they are this is great <laughs> so everybody is going to be your friend when you ride a Ural uh, you also should be somewhat of a mechanic it does take some uh, not necessarily high maintenance but it does require maintenance uh, one quirky thing about it the speedometer does register the speedometer is in miles per hour the odometer is in kilometers. 
and uh, you need oil changes every 2,500 kilometers, which is not sure about 1,700, 1,800 miles thereabouts. Could be wrong. Very often, but it does take regular oil, 2050. It doesn't take motorcycle oil. It's got a dry clutch, so the engine takes two quarts. Transmission takes one. You change both of those, and usually you want to change the uh, rear drive. It's shaft drive, so you don't have to worry about chains or any of that, but it does have a differential. The gear up, what you're looking at here, is a two-wheel drive model. So it does have the differential in the rear with the drive shaft to the uh, sidecar wheel. So one other question, bring that up. Uh, people always ask, can you take the sidecar off? I'm sure you can probably take it off, but you wouldn't want to. The suspension you see up here is not like a regular motorcycle suspension. This front suspension is made for a sidecar. The way the levered suspension is, it keeps the, I don't know, it's easier to steer with this type of suspension rather than the tube type suspension. Or the regular forks. I also like these parts of the fender because uh, it is an off-road vehicle and front and rear you've got this and you can pull it out of mud or, or whatever. That's the other thing besides uh, hauling capability this has is since it is two-wheel drive you can drive it in the snow, in the mud, uh, you can extend your riding season to places where I wouldn't want to take a two a two wheeler, you know, where you've got lots of gravel and uh, snow, ice, and different things. This was built for Siberia and Russia, so it's going to go everywhere. When you do engage the wheel back there, it does have a tendency to go in a straight line. Uh, and you don't do that on the road because it does not have a slipping rear end. That is only meant for off-road use. So whenever you turn, one tire is going to slip. Uh, another thing you want to be careful of is uh, right hand turns because the, the sidecar will lift up if you're going too fast. It's nothing to be, be too scared about. You can have this almost at a, probably a 40 degree angle and it still won't tip over. But you decrease your speed just a little bit, a little touch of the brake, lean over to this side and it'll bring it down. Uh, accessories, I've got a windscreen on this side. I've got a windscreen on the uh, sidecar. This blocks the air really well. There's hardly any air that goes on your hands. On your face we'll see how that is when it gets to be 30 degrees if, it, if I still think that when you add the sidecar windshield to it when you have this one you're sitting here and the air it gets directed across and at you if you are the the driver uh, as the the passenger uh, you're pretty comfortable so with this down, which this just folds down, this is held up with these little clips here and this what they call an apron. When you detach that, this will lay down and you can put the, the tonic cover over this. And then this is very comfortably behind here. There was one time I realized how different this vehicle is, is when I went to say uh, one of the online motorcycle stores and they have across the top what type of motorcycle do you have is this a cruiser no is it a sport bike definitely not is it an ATV kinda but it ain't what they're talking about uh, it doesn't fit any of the categories that the motorcycle stores have it is completely unique uh, he has gone for a ride in this he does like it. He hasn't been over like 20 miles an hour. But if you plan on carrying a dog, you have to figure out a way to keep them in here so they don't jump out. That could be very dangerous for you and the dog.
All right, with the gear up, it comes with a spare tire and a rear luggage rack. The trunk is under here. It does lock. I've heard it is not recommended to lock it. Uh, sometimes Russian parts are not the most reliable, and supposedly this and the lock for the tank uh, compartment and the, the fuel uh, cap are not the best things in the world. So this is the trunk. Comes with a uh, air pump and a very nice tool kit. This tool kit uh, has everything, every tool that you need, specialty or not, to do work on the vehicle and to change tires. It's got the spoons to pull the tires off of uh, the rims and replace them. This is your rear and sidecar brake. This is mechanical, at least up until the 2013. 2014 they went to uh, hydraulic and both sides, the rear and the sidecar brake are hydraulic. This lever is for the uh, locking your sidecar wheel into two wheel drive. This lever, which you can operate with your, your the heel of your boot down and up. If you push it down a little bit it goes into neutral. If you push it all the way down it goes into reverse. Alright, left side of the engine you've got your heel toe shifter and where you need to check your oil your uh, fuel petcock which is vacuum operated so whenever you don't have to turn this off every time you ride it maybe for long storage periods you might want to uh, I would compare this to a old Land Rover I have a 71 Land Rover series and it too is slow and utilitarian it doesn't go over 60 but it is very simple and easy to repair and like the Land Rover the Land Rover you can still crank start this still has a kickstarter kick starts right here uh, there are no safety devices so make sure it's in neutral do not hold in the clutch because if you hold in the clutch it disengages this and it doesn't do anything so Leave the clutch out, leave it out of gear, and kick it. And it starts pretty easy. The gear up also has a spare fuel can. It does say no water or gas, so I'm not sure what they expect you to put in it. Maybe vodka. Beats me. The gear up also includes a shovel, which I'm not sure if that is to dig yourself out of trouble or bury the dead bodies that you leave behind. One question that people have when they... When they look at the rear of the bike, they see the mud flaps. The mud flap says Y pan, and people were, and I was not really sure what Y pan was. But that does say Ural in the Russian Cyrillic alphabet. This knob is the steering dampener, which basically just tightens down the friction of the handlebars so that when you're off road, uh, it gives it some friction so it doesn't jerk the wheel back and forth in, in rough terrain. The gear up model also comes with a spotlight. This is not a driving light, it is very narrow beam and it is a spotlight. And the switch is inside the sidecar. It also comes with a bumper. Everything is made of steel, even the uh, fairing is made of pretty thick steel. Everything steel except for maybe these little things here, but it's very well made. Maybe not very precision. It is Russian. Uh, so it is very unique. Uh, one odd thing about the wheels, which are spokes, the spokes are not the same size as other spokes, so you need to get them from a Euro dealer. You cannot go to get parts for this thing or tires from regular dealers. You have to go back to your Euro dealer or some specialty place to get parts for it. Not that they're hard to get, 
but you do have to go find the parts. You're not going to go to a motorcycle superstore and find the parts for it. Take special tires. They are six ply, different than regular motorcycle tires because they're side loading on a sidecar motorcycle. You're not leaning into turns. So there's a lot of side load on it and there's six plies. I did forget to mention that the motorcycle is a two cylinder opposed 750cc. Uh, I hope you find that this was informative and uh, eye opening possibly. It may turn you away from a Ural or it might sell you on a Ural. That's up to you. It's a very individualized, purpose built bike and uh, it does its thing very well and different than any other motorcycle available today.